So I've shown before how to recap a Game Gear. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how I would prep this one, but what I'm going to show you now is the way I do it fast. So if you've got a hot air work, rework station, then this is the way you want to do it. Uh, you can have the Game Gear fully decapped, recapped, and the original screen off and safely reusable in under probably five to 10 minutes at most. So I'm just going to show you how I work. It's going to be a nice quick little video to show you the way to easily remove all these components with nothing but a hot air as well as put the new capacitors back on with nothing but hot air. So let's just jump in and take a look at how I do it. So the first thing we need to do is just take out the four screws holding the screen in. Once you've done that, you can remove this bracket. So you lift up and over the um, backlight tube. Now to strip this down ready for a clean screen, I'm going to remove the tube, the inductor, all the caps, the LCD, and then I'm going to recap uh, the capacitors that are needed. So the first step I'm going to do is remove the LCD. So I'll show you the way I do it that allows you to remove this completely clean without ripping pads, without burning anything, and with having a completely reusable screen. So the trick is, when it's loose here, you want to tuck it under so that in essence it gets a sort of a fold. And what's going to try and happen is this here is going to try and lift up. It's going to naturally want to, if that wasn't soldered in, it's going to naturally want to lift up like this. So if we just push in like this, and then you just want to try and hold it in a position, sort of I do this to keep my hands away from the hot air, just to keep it under a bit of tension. Otherwise, it will just spring out like that. So you've got to keep a bit of tension. The other thing you could do is just get some solder and place it on the screen and just push from here. So we'll do that in this case. We'll push that in. And now I'm going to use my hot air station. And this is set to 420 Celsius and 120 air. So this is quite hot for using hot air, but this is the speed I use. If you use it correctly and you're fast, this is how you can take pretty much anything off. So I'm going to pick it up, and all I'm going to do, uh, if I just turn it off a second, I'm going to pick the hot air up. I'm going to come in close to the pin, and I'd say I'm about a centimetre away. I'm going to start on these pins, and I'm just going to wait until I hear or see this little bit click up. The first part will take a bit longer to heat up because the whole board has to heat up. And then once it starts clicking away, I'll just slowly move down and you'll see it go click, 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 click all the way down until it's off. Uh, so the importance is get the heat high and fast airflow. Stay about a centimetre away and as soon as it starts clicking up, just slowly come down. You don't want to leave the hot air there if something's not working. If you find that it's not coming on, check your air temperature, air speed and distance. But this is how it should work. So I'll just turn the hot air on. And then I'm going to just pull this board in under a bit of tension. And then I'm just going to come down here and start. And it'll take a few seconds. And then it'll start to click. And hopefully you'll see the click. I'll try and do it from this angle. Move my hand away from the hot air. And now it's starting to lift. I just slowly come past. And you can see it just popping away. And if it gets stuck at one point, you can move up and down a little bit in case you've missed a pin but in general this is the speed you go and it takes like 30 seconds once it's off like that while it's still warm push down there and peel off the tape underneath because the tape's still warm so it'll peel off easy sometimes this sticks other times it comes off clean but that's just a simple clean up if you want and importantly you can see the pins on here are perfectly fine the screen is completely reusable now as well as the pins on here won't have solder bridges because the screen's been lifted up like this and not across. So these pins will all be completely clean uh, and it's very rare you'll ever get a short between them. So that's effectively the screen off and ready to go. Now the technique for removing the tube and the fuse, you can use the hot air just the same or you can use a soldering iron, whichever you prefer. To get the fuse off, I just push down gently on here and warm up this pad. And that's that out. Same the other side. You tend to just lift up and it falls out, but you can put a bit of pressure on, warm up the pad. And that's the tube out. For the fuses, do the same. Just grab the metal bar underneath in between, warm up the pad. And 
and that comes out. This pad tends to take more time because there's all a ground pad all around here, so expect that one to take a few seconds longer than the rest. This side comes out pretty quick. Like that. Same for this fuse. And turn it around for the other fuse. Just be careful when you're doing the fuses as well that your hot air is pointing away from the cartridge connector. Hence why I'm blowing in towards the board and at an angle, not straight down and over this. With the screen, the backlight and the fuses removed, we flip over and now it's onto what we originally set out to do, which is to remove the caps. Just before that, I'm gonna remove this inductor. Another trick, many people like to solder onto the pins of the inductor um, go over them a few times and pull from the other side because this is an inductor and it's all metal and we're not trying to salvage it you can find that if you simply heat it up from the front here and again pointing away from this black pla uh, this plastic connector here just go to near the base of the inductor and warm up and if you just hold on the inductor it takes a few seconds and it's off and that's it it's a lot less work than um, soldering from the other side now here comes the magic so normally you'd have to crack the adhesive off here, get the solder to stick to these pads to remove them, you know, quite a lot of work. Just take your hot air gun, go to the base, just hold on here gently, and off it comes. Do the same for all of them. You just hold on, wait until it's loose, and there's no pressure applied here, uh, and it's off. When you come to this part, rotate around so we don't melt this again. You want to try and avoid as much as possible getting near any of the plastic. Up here it's kind of unavoidable, but you'll see how I do that in a minute. So that one off. That one off. And you can see how much quicker this is. It literally is a few seconds to remove them all. And the hot air naturally breaks down the adhesive as well, so it makes it much easier to remove. And there's a lot less stress to the board uh, for fracture damage when you're removing these caps. You'll also find as you're going, because the overall board stays warm, that will come off quicker and quicker, so you'll probably find it takes less time as you're going to remove the caps. And then this one now is the hardest one to not melt here. So if you're not too fussed about melting a bit of the plastic, you can just do what I'm about to do. Otherwise, I'd recommend just sliding down a little bit of metal or foil here to properly protect this plastic. But if you come at an angle sort of almost flat down and here instead of directly over here, you tend to find you can get the passive heat enough to take this off without melting the plastic. So that's that off. And I haven't touched that at all. That's completely intact. But you'll very easily melt that if you're not careful, uh, as well as notice this inductor move, but it's back in position. So just be careful with that one. Uh, if you're not comfortable with hot air, you could just do that one a different way. The final two are over here now. So we have this one. And because this is the opposite side of the board, this will take a little bit longer to warm up because that side of the board's hot, not this one. But it still only take five to 10 seconds at most to get this up to removable temperature. And then that way, remove this one. And you can see that's all the caps now removed in a few minutes. And all we need to do now uh, is put the caps back on. So first we want to clean up the pads. But just before I do that, because I'm going to use a clean screen, if you really want to save time here, there's no point putting caps back on that are nothing to do with um, the clean screen. So what you'll find is you actually only need this capacitor here, this capacitor here. All these can be left. You need these two here or on a one chip, 
there's one down here and one over here. So basically the lowest two down here are needed and the top two here are needed. Nothing else there is needed. And then you have two caps over here. So what you'll have is one, two, three, four, five, six caps. That's it. So all we've got to do to recap it for um, any modern screen that I know of, ours, Ben Venn's, McWill's, uh, Retro Kai's, they're all the same. We don't use um, the old driver circuit. I think Ben Venn's uses 34 volts on the wheel. Um, so you'd have to double check with his, but certainly the rest. You can follow this exact same guide, whichever screen you use. So I'm just gonna grab the capacitors that we need, which is three 100 microfarads and three 10 microfarads from our ceramic capacitor kit. So here's the kit. And from this kit, we won't even need the one microfarad because they're for the old screen. So they can go. And we'll just need three out of here, three out of here. So we'll start with the 100 microfarads first. Well, let's just clean up the pads with a bit of fresh solder. So I'm just going to grab um, some fresh solder and go on the pads, apply some fresh solder. Remember, we only need these two. And then once they are on, just clean the iron go over once more. And I'm going to make a nice bubble on both sides because we're going to hot air these in. So the solder wants to already be on the pads in this instance. Might as well just get the other pads prepped as well. So there's this pad. And what doing this is doing here um, is removing the old leaded solder. And the heat and the flux will naturally burn away the corrosion on the pad as well. So in my previous video on recapping the Game Gear, I go through the kind of cleanup process in a lot more depth and show you how to desolder wick it all off, solder wick it back on. What I'm doing here is effectively the same thing, but I'm using the iron to de-wick the old solder and apply new solder multiple times. So I'm effectively cleaning and de-wicking by using the flux built in to the solder, uh, and I can do this step all in kind of one go. So that's them prepped as well. And now the same for this side. And this one's quite uh, corroded, so it takes a few goes to get rid of the corrosion and old solder on the pads. And there we go. So now, all we've got to do is hot air these back on, and we're done. We're fully recapped, screen off, and ready for a clean screen. So let's just get the hot air. Same principle applies. Um, in fact, just before showing you that, when you're holding the capacitors in tweezers, is notice when I hold them, um, I don't hold them so that the tweezers are all the way over. So if I hold them like this when you pick them up, see the tweezers are coming over the actual capacitor. So when I point down on the board, it's not really gonna stick. So when you pick them up naturally, especially on a rubber mat, you'll end up picking them up with the tweezers slightly overhanging. Instead, pick them up only halfway down the body. So once you've got them, the tweezers are above the capacitor, and when we hot air and place down, the capacitor is going to be able to press flush into the board. And again, don't press while the solder is hard, because once you press like that, it's back up on the tweezers. So it's a really little detail, but it stops the components blowing away. So if you're trying to do this and follow, and you put hot air on and your capacitor goes flying off, the reason is how you're holding them in the tweezers. Make sure the capacitor is below the tweezers, you wait until it's molten, and you gently place in. Once it's in, surface tension will grip and it won't go anywhere. So I'll show you on this one first. This top one's 100 microfarad. So I'll warm up a bit first, get the capacitor in, and let go. And bear in mind, this is actually at 120 air as well. So when you're reflowing caps, you don't want to be as close as when you're removing them. So keep this probably quite high up. The closer you go, the more air is going to blow them off. And it doesn't matter how much um, surface tension you have if you're too close you're going to blow the components off so it's important to be far a bit further away when you're recapping them when you're removing them so let's do this one now and again remember this one wants to point away from the blue plastic aim down here and once it's warm let go and you can see from a distance 
uh, it won't blow away. So that's them two on. There's now one more down here, the last 100 microfarad. But again, remember there's black plastic, so we want to blow from this side. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to come in from here. I'm going to place in. And there he's on. Now we've got one more here, two over there and we're done. They are the 10 microfarad, so let me just get them out now. And now let's put this 10 microfarad on the same way. Flip it round and put this one on. And then rotate this way and put the last one on. And that's the recap done. Uh, if you really want to, you can then just go around with your iron after they've been hot aired and just tack a bit of extra solder on uh, if you feel you know you want to tidy up the connections. If you do it right, however, uh, they won't need that. They'll be naturally flown on with the hot air and look just right. So that's now a stripped board with a completely reusable um, original screen. Uh, you know, if the screen was to work, all these pins are completely reusable. And the caps on that we need for a modern screen replacement. So this should hopefully help some of you guys cut down your labor time when you're prepping game gears for mods. You don't need to mess with all of the solder, take forever scraping and cutting. Uh, you don't need to put half the capacitors on. Hopefully this kind of technique shows you uh, a faster way of working and helps you guys. If you're interested in anything else specifically, you want to see me mod, fix or repair, just let me know. And I'll see you in the next one.